Glory to God. Okay, uh, Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 6, Jesus is actually preaching. And so he said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to tonight, uh, specifically our, our title is Get Acquainted. So what we're going to get acquainted with is righteousness. Okay, and, and it's actually, uh, you know, vitally important for believers to understand this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, glory to God. Now, so uh, just for your uh, information, the word righteousness in Hebrew, uh, you know, Hebrew and Greek are two different languages. Uh, but the word translated uh, righteousness in the Old Testament is somewhat different uh, from the word in the New Testament. So uh, before we get to the Greek part, if you would just go with me over to uh, Isaiah chapter 32. Hallelujah. I hope you're reading your Bibles with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you can always join in at any point. So uh, we're currently going through, uh, actually we're about the end of this month, we're going to be about halfway through Psalms. I really love Psalms. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But then we're going to go into the book of Proverbs and then into uh, the major prophets. Praise the Lord, which will include Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel and Daniel. Glory to God. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, Isaiah chapter 32, uh, verse 17, it says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Now, there's an element of righteousness, what the word actually means in the Old Testament, that is important for believers to get a hold of being New Testament believers. Okay, so the righteousness is act actually a characteristic of God's nature. And uh, when Jesus said that uh, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled, that's a promise, which means that we, if we desire righteousness, hallelujah, we're going to expand our understanding here tonight a little bit. If you desire righteousness, you will be filled. Okay. So one of the things that righteousness, see the word, just simply the word righteousness uh, in Hebrew means to make right in a moral or cleansing sense. Okay. So when you and I accepted Jesus as our Savior, we were made right by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so we've been made right, and we will find out in a, in a moment, we're going to read the verse, that we've actually been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and that righteousness is a free gift. But again, if you don't even know what righteousness is, uh, a short version of definition for the word righteousness is right standing with God, but what does it take to make a person in right standing with God? Because he is righteousness. Well, you have to be made right. Well, in order to understand what it means to be made right, you have to understand what right is. Now, so the New Testament talks extensively about the righteousness of the law. Okay, and so what the law did, uh, by New Testament understanding, what the law did was, was created a standard to define righteousness. As it turned out, uh, people couldn't do that. Because there was a, you know, because man has fallen. So under the old covenant, people were not saved. They were not washed in the blood of the Lamb. They were not new creatures. They were not made righteous. They did not have a righteous nature. So their attempt to keep the law was in essence an effort to be righteous or to be made righteous by their own deeds, which the New Testament explains in great detail fell very short. Are you, are you out there tonight? 
And I thank God for the work of grace on our lives. Amen. But to really appreciate the grace of God, it helps to understand really what righteousness is and what, what it means to be made righteous. So um, Abraham, righteousness was accounted to him for his faith. He believed God and it was his belief was accounted to him for righteousness. Now that does not say that Abraham committed any righteousness and it doesn't say that Abraham was actually changed. It is accounted means that it was credited to his account as being righteous. So uh, one of the things that um, the New Testament says about righteousness, and um, so we, we read uh, what Jesus said, uh, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Okay, so the word righteousness in the New Testament, it's the same word all the way through the New Testament, just like in the Old Testament. It's a family of words, but it's all the same word. Okay, so in the New Testament, the word righteousness literally means equity. It, when it's in a verb sense, it's to bring something to a place of equity, which means balance. Okay, or to justify. So we, we were unjust and the work of Christ at Calvary was applied to us and justified us. Okay, so we, we didn't actually do anything to be justified. It's, it's the same thing as being a criminal and being let off the hook. And it's, it's an acquittal. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can you say Amen. Okay, so then there's the noun side of uh, New Testament. You know, in Greek, similar to English, there's verbs and nouns, action words, and then things that receive the action. Uh, so uh, the, ver the noun side of it is an equitable deed done. Okay, now, you know, the New Testament, again, is very clear about the fact that we could not actually conduct or, or do an equitable deed. Okay? But, uh, so in other words, you could use the word righteousness to say that that was a righteous action. Okay? Now, I, I have some unsaved Jewish friends who describe what they call Gentiles as being either righteous or unrighteous Gentiles. And their definition of a righteous Gentile is somebody that um, went out of their way to help and preserve Jews. Okay, so uh, during World War II, there was a number of people that actually, you know, the stories still keep coming out about how uh, people stepped into the, the fray, so to speak, to act as a wall against the oppressive regime of the Nazis who were trying to kill the Jews and many others as well. Hallelujah. Are you there? And so that term righteous Gentile, you know, we, we had them call us that because, uh, you know, we did things for Israel. Hallelujah. So, so, but, you know, they call that righteousness, but as far as God is concerned, it, it's, it, you know, it's, no, <laughs> it, yeah, just a good deed to pray, praise the Lord. God is good. Blessing Israel is a, is a righteous thing to do, but it's not going to produce righteousness for you. Amen. The only way righteousness can actually be transferred to a person is through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ being applied to them. Are you there? The sins being forgiven. Okay. But nevertheless, you know, to get back to the definition, there are things that are right and there are things that are wrong. Okay. Now, so, you know, mankind has got really gotten out there, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> How many of you are willing to admit that mankind has, okay. So the whole idea that God of himself can declare something to be right or wrong sounds like a foreign idea in our culture today. 
Now, this is the reason why the church, the body of Christ, you and I need to hold on to what the truth about righteousness is. See, it's, it's more than just being made righteous. It's actually the difference between right and wrong. And, you know, people, so they think it's a matter of opinion. They want to know how many people believe, you know, that something is right and how many people believe that something is wrong. And then the more people that are involved, that makes it right. Well, so there are some things that people have decided. This, is this, this might be a little blunt for you, but it's going to help you. But there's things that people have decided in the United States that are right publicly, but are not right spiritually and never will be right. Hallelujah. God is good. So people choose, make these choices. This is important to keep in mind. Just because people want something doesn't make it right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, so if you go back and read the Old Testament to get the definition of righteousness by listening to what God says is wrong, he says the shedding of innocent blood is wrong. That went over real big. Thank you, Jesus. So what a, a believer should do, that, that's just an example. Uh, worshiping of idols is one of the other things that uh, God decries and speaks about extensively as being unrighteous. Which, which is, well, what, what is the thing about idols? Well, it, man giving the work of his own hands, the credit for life and everything instead of giving it to God. It's actually a fabrication of worthiness. Amen. So, you know, like in our culture, people say, well, people here don't worship idols. Really? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not, it's not always just things. It's people. It's types of people. Yeah, American Idol. <laughs> that says it easily. Amen. How many of you are there? Okay. So, uh, as a Christian, you should not have any problem with God without asking you. God saying that is wrong. So you should be on board with this and not resisting or questioning or wondering. Come on now, are you out there? Okay, so when Jesus said, people that hunger and thirst after righteousness, when do people hunger and thirst after righteousness? Well, when you've been deprived from right things for so long, you, there is a, like people, Christians, start to hunger for something that's right. Ooh, come on now, are you there? Amen. Wanting something around you in your life, in your family, something in your experience to be actually right. Now, you know, in, in our culture, the, it's like the lies just continue to develop. So uh, lies always uh, give way to other sorts of, you know, when, a, when people are lying about something, what they're really doing is covering up what's actually happening, which gives like, you know, pu the public approves of certain things Okay, but then when the truth gets very far removed from what is actually in practice to where it's all lied about, then the injustice occurs. And so un injustice has a tendency to cause people to want to hunger for something that's right. Amen. 
God is good. So, hallelujah. Our, uh, the, you know, the fact that the, uh, Jesus came to the earth, died at the, on the cross at Calvary for us, and the fact that the Holy Ghost has been present in the earth for 2,000 years in this new ministry that he's got, and the church has been here, has developed a base of righteous understanding in the nations of the world to the extent that, that people say, well, you know, uh, it's wrong for uh, those people to just be pushed down or killed like that. So even, even uh, unrighteous peop people that are unrighteous by nature speak up and say, you know, there's something wrong here because the ends don't connect. There's no relationship between reality and what's being presented. Now, you do a little study in history and what you find out, that's one of the last things that starts occurring before the real bad stuff starts happening. Because once uh, the oppressor has his deeds covered by lies, then there's nothing to stop them from just doing whatever they want to do. Historically, that's a pattern. Glory to God. God is good. Somebody out there ought to say amen. So when Jesus was saying, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, you see, the body of Christ ought to at least be the people on the earth who say, I really want some righteousness around here. I know that I've been made righteous, but I'd, I'd like to have a little righteousness around me. I, I would like to have something that's right for a change. Glory to God. Are you out there? So that's a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. So what Jesus said is they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, righteousness shall be filled. So in other words, when you start calling for it, it's going to come. How many of you want right things around you? You do. You really do. You might not realize it. But unrighteousness inflicts pain. Injustice. Hallelujah. Bad things. It's, it's, it's a pall. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Okay, so go with me over to Romans chapter 5. Praise you, Jesus. Two, two passages here about how God actually um, fixed the dilemma of righteousness. You, you see, God is the one who really is righteous. <laughs> and he's the one who loves righteousness. So the Old Testament was... Uh, and you have to understand, God knew it was going to turn out the way it did. Okay, the, the thing with righteousness. So he knew it wasn't going to work because it, he, he already had set in plan the plan of redemption for the Lord Jesus Christ to make a way for us to be imparted with righteousness without having to do it. Amen. Amen. God is good. So uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 17, this is one of the verses uh, relating to that. He says, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, this is talking about the cross, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Okay, so notice that phrase, the gift of righteousness. Well, righteousness became a gift that was impartable to us through Jesus' work at Calvary and, the, and the, actually the result of the new birth. So when you're born of Christ, you're born of a righteous spirit. The gift of righteousness. It's a gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Couldn't have earned it if we wanted to. And it's explained in great detail in the New Testament. It's a free gift. Hallelujah. Book of Romans is very clear on that. Hallelujah. So God concluded, the book of Romans tells us, that God included the whole world 
in one uh, category so that by one man's sacrifice, one person could pay the price for everybody in the same way that Adam was one person, but his sin passed to everybody. So the righteousness of God can be passed to any person who accepts what Jesus did. Abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall be transferred. Hallelujah. And thou shalt reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. How many of you are out there? Glory to God. So God answered his own claims and calls for righteousness by creating a way for man to be made righteous in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we've been made righteous and now what believers need to do is act righteous. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Act right. Oh, that, 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 I don't know why. See, I told you. That's, that's the cultural influence of the nation that you live in. Ooh, I'm glad I came to church tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How many of you like right things? Okay, see, so we should hunger and thirst after righteousness. We should like for things to go right and not wrong. Okay, so here's another one. Go over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Praise you, Jesus. Verse 21. Again, talking about Jesus' work at Calvary. It says, for he, God, has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made. See that? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, let's get the expression correct. Okay. So, when uh, someone does a righteous deed... That deed is called their righteousness. Okay? So, God did a deed, conducted a deed with Calvary that produced us. The, the outcome of it is we are His righteousness. He made things right through Calvary. How many of you got that? So we've been made the righteous. We're actually the offspring, if you want to say it that way, of his righteousness. We're a manifestation of his righteousness by the righteous deed that he conducted at Calvary with his son's death. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. So we've been made the righteousness of God in him. So wherever you go, you're tagged with God's righteousness. Now, it's not your, your righteousness. It's his righteousness. Okay? Now, that's, that when it comes to your prayer life, and we, we'll talk about this, that's uh, really important to understand that, for instance, when you ask something in the name of Jesus, that's laying claim to his righteousness which means right standing with God. Okay? But Jesus is, is righteous. So when we, he gave us use of his name, when we ask in his name, we're laying claim to his righteousness. Which is why we have a voice with our heavenly father. God is good. Now God is righteous in these claims. It's important to understand that, that the New Testament explains to us God is no respecter of persons. So uh, it's, it's, you know, it's man has a way of picking the wrong people to be right. <laughs> when you look at the church and the people that God is actually answering their prayers, 
It doesn't look like the same kind of thing that the world would produce. I mean, the, the world, you know, has this perfect people thing. Hallelujah. But, but you, you look at a bunch of Christians, and Christians are self-admittedly not perfect in everything. In fact, we don't really look like we could do anything. We're kind of a, you know, in the world, to the world, we look like a motley crew, which is the reason why they mock the church. Hallelujah. But when you pray in the name of Jesus, you see, just to, re, just to say it again, God is no respecter of persons, so you know, you, you might not look very righteous or even act very righteous. But when you pray by faith in the name of Jesus, then God sees Jesus' righteousness and answers your prayer accordingly. Which is the reason why he could gather together a group of people like us. Hallelujah, which are, you know, the, the world looks at us and they, they go, how in the world could that be working? Well, praise the Lord. God chooses the base things of the world to confound the wise. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, I don't mind, you know, admitting it. I'm, I'm uh, you know, not uh, a perfect person. How many of you are willing to admit that? Okay, so when I pray in the name of Jesus, I'm not asking him to listen to me on the basis of how perfect I am. Mm -mm -mm. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. So righteousness is a free gift and it is imparted to us. God actually conducted all of that strategically to get righteousness in the earth, in a people. You know, God's got a plan. And so righteousness, uh, I'll, I'll close with this just so that, that you understand. Uh, because the body of Christ is made righteous, and the church does and should hunger and thirst after righteousness, that's a force of right in the earth. So, um, important not to sell short God's righteousness in the earth in his people. Now, the reason why I'm saying that to you is because people get really negative about the future. And they, they're overlooking some very big things, like the righteousness of God in the church, in the earth, and you're actually a restraining force. You don't have to try to do it. You are a restraining force of darkness. So wherever you show up, righteousness is shining. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good.